hello, hello. Um, yes, yeah, so I work for a great company called UL, and I wanted to talk to you about today is product testing, product certification. How do you meet your obligation as a supplier and as a manufacturer to meet obligations of the country for whatever product you're selling? Um, how do you do that? Why do you need to do that? So hopefully I can answer those questions for you today. Um, so, so what is a product standard? Now, excuse me for reading this. This is purely online, just but I think it explains really well what is a, um, a standard and, and what are they and why are they there. So mandatory safety standards specify minimum requirements that products must meet before they are supplied. They are introduced when considered reasonably necessary to prevent or reduce the risk of injury to a person. Uh, product standards are designed to ensure safety, compatibility and consistency. If a product has met a standard, it usually means that it has passed tests but demonstrated it complies with certain safety and quality requirements. And the purpose of the mandatory standard is to make particular safety or information features of products compulsory for legal supply of the product into the market. Um, it is an offence to supply goods that do not comply with mandatory standards. And I thought that last point is a really important one because some many don't don't realise that it's it's a legal requirement, uh, which is why you may have seen products be pulled out of Amazon, um, and your, your shops have been closed down because they're not you know, as a retailer they're responsible. So that's why they make you responsible for that product. Can I get um, just an idea in the room? Who has had to um, get their products tested in the past or get certification for definitely yep it's a very confusing it can be a very confusing process very complicated process at times probably more so than it, than it needs to be um, but the reason why that is is that you're working globally and it's quite different when you're working or selling in the, um, the states than you are in Australia so that could be one toy is completely different in USA than you will be in, in Europe um, the standards are different, the testing and the parameters are different. It's important to understand that too when you're looking and analysing your products and the need. But let's look at the, the market overall. So it is a little bit old, from about 2015, but I think the figures are still quite relevant. Um, you know, there's over $100 million in fines, just fines, when, especially around big corporations or not even big. A lot of the products that I'm seeing pulled are just, you know, mum and dad sellers on eBay. Um, you know, all the time, they're on weekly on the ACCC products getting pulled. Um, not necessarily getting fined. Fines are usually when you know your obligation and then you're not, um, you're not following through, um, or you have been told and you're not recalling and you're not following through as well. You can definitely get big, big fines for that. Um, the product recalls have increased by 32%, but because online testing, so online sales in the marketplaces are so much accessible now and, and easier to do, that product that has probably actually increased quite significantly. Um, only 20% of products are being recalled, which means there are unsafe products out there, um, <coughs> potential hazardous um, chemicals might still be selling because people aren't returning them. They don't know, they don't get the message that the product has been affected, um, which is actually can be quite scary. 88% of consumers say that they will stop buying a product um, if they've learned that the irresponsible business practices and you know how brands have been tarnished when their name gets out into the marketplace right um, and you don't want to be you know that be your label and 58 percent of consumers believe that manufacturers value sales over safety that may not be true probably not because I think the biggest problem is is that being unaware hmm. you know it's just being unaware that you, you need to do that so it really comes up to yourself to bring understanding and do your research on what what products needs and does your product need it Okay, who, who is UL? Um, UL, we, it's really hard to explain. It's actually, it's purely, we write standards and we, um, so we, I don't even know how to describe it to UL. Our services actually are so vast. Someone says, what do you do? I'm like, it's a really complicated question. Um, so we supply safety. We, we're a public safety. We're in the, in the industry of public safety, providing safety certification for products globally. Uh, probably one of the largest unknown companies there are. Um, with writing over 1,600 standards, the UL certifications, you know, affecting 22 billion products, um, 143 countries, 20 different industries, and that's actually growing. Okay, so the reason why I wanted to put this up here is to know the services that are available either between for UL or other testing labs. 
um, and that is an in inspections, and I'll go into that in a little bit more detail. Auditors, um, education is probably a big part of what we do as well. Um, testing, certification, marketing claim verification. Um, and I will go into that just slightly, briefly, a little bit later, but it's just important to know if you're going to claim something about your product, you need to back it up. It may not be uh, you know, a, a, a regulatory, or may not be, um, actually, yeah, no, it is, it is, you have to, it's compulsory, because if you're saying your product is safe or has UV protection or whatever it may be, you need to be able to back it up, 100%, even if it's not like a, a you know, by law written standard. Um, okay, so that's a little bit more, but that's okay. Now, these are the different areas, when I say consumer retail, so consu CRS, which is consume, uh, Consumer Retail Division, is a division within UL. Um, so and these are the products that it covers, which is probably about 80% of the products that are being sold um, you know, online you know, by us. Um, that's actually grown, I was just saying, look at it before, it's a little bit old. Um, so I always recommend, if you're not sure, ask. And we can recommend you, again, we, over, we cover about 20 different industries, so it's always, you know, if it's not us, if it's not me, um, it, it's another, maybe another division. Now, does your product need testing? Anything, anything that's kids related, children's related, anything at all, 100%, you need testing. Okay, even if it's a plush toy or a t-shirt or something that's sleeping, flammability testing, linen, 100% um, definitely needs testing. Anything in cosmetics, art supplies, mm -hmm. chemical testing. Um, electrical, anyone do electrical here? Electrical products? Smart. Group here. <laughs> very smart. Um, and if you did, I'd probably talk you out of it. No, it's it, electrical. It's, it's a it's a very it's a complicated area and it's an expensive area, especially if you're selling in the US. You've got follow-up services, follow-up inspections. So there are ongoing costs related to that. Um, so it's always good to know that many don't realise until they you know an inspector comes to their um, to the factory and wanting to inspect and making sure. So the US is really 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 strict. Uh, Australia not so much, but it's, it's a requirement for all services with the US. Um, and no, it's not cheap. Yeah, so I always, if you're not sure if your product really needs it and the information is readily available, ask. Right? Um, a good, a good uh, testing lab will provide that education for you and will guide you in the right way. I mean, we're, we're definitely not in the business of always providing free information. Um, because you find that a lot of people go, oh yeah, can I, can I just get information and they go somewhere else. Um, so it's always, but a good testing lab will provide that education for you, will at least lead you in the right direction um, you know, to get the information that you need. Okay, quiz. Oh, where's my, where's my beautiful, <laughs> just, just recording. That's live stream stopping. Yes. <laughs> Now, why is a certificate from a supplier not enough? Have you ever gone to a supplier who's found a product and go, oh, we've got the certificate for that, it's okay. Make an order with us and we'll provide you the certificate. Has anyone heard that? You've heard that? Yes, floor? Yep, so you hear that. Let us know. Now, why isn't that enough? You get a UL mug. Because you might get the certificate for the state where you're buying it, but you can't apply for the state where you want to sell it. 100%, absolutely yeah. right. You get a well in, in the US, uh, Proposition 65, California. It's actually specific to California, but Amazon do it as a as a as a blanket rule, and it's very so their chemical testing is quite high, um, and it affects a lot of products. So in the recent maybe year, it's only been taken effect in the last year. So you find that testing prices have gone up a little bit because of that. So just be aware. Um, yeah, physical testing, safety testing, performance testing, there's a whole lot that's, that's required. Um, and don't be afraid to question the test lab. If you see something that doesn't look right to you, question, ask questions, because it may not be as, as straightforward. Um, you know, especially they look globally, so things can get mixed up, so don't be afraid to question it. Oh, another quiz. Audits and inspection, what's their purpose? Why are they important? To check compliance with standards. Yep, exactly. Anyone else? <laughs> it's good mugs. Just they are, I've got one. They're amazing. 
Any other reason what the purpose of inspection? Yeah, like even to check what it gets into. So, for example, to check what actually gets sent to us. So it's a random check in a way. Yeah, so exactly. So you can also verify the other side if they did honestly inspecting whatever the standard requirement for that particular yeah, market are. Uh, yeah, so. so they're following through with what you've ordered as yeah. well. You get a pair of mugs. How good is that? Can we get another one here? Can I have a collection? Do you want to have a pair? Do you want to go for a pair? Anyone else? No, sorry. Yeah. Simple quality control. 100%. And one more at the back, please. Mug helper. Exactly right. Sections help control the quality of products. Um, by helping fix the source of defects immediately after they've been detected. I'm not sure if you're, you know, there are, there are horror stories where products have been sent to Amazon and it's a, a cheap holly form of their sample and they've had to destroy and, and they lose $15,000, $10,000, $20,000 worth of products when you could have had that visa for about three, three hundred and fifty, four hundred, so whatever, $400, you know, inspection um, and, and fix it at the source. So it can save you a lot of money. Um, so exactly, reduction of uh, non-compliant products prevents defects, uh, defective products, heightened uh, customer satisfaction, reduction in product returns if you're selling online, it's probably a big one, um, and achievement of quality standards. And these are all the different types of inspections that you can ask for, because you can actually get it at um, a production, so they can be that's where they can do it while your product is being produced, which is more of an audit than an inspection. You can get it at while it's about to be uh, shipped. So there are a whole lot of different stages, uh, and it's always good to be aware of those stages so you can you know to ask for them. Uh, you probably can't really read that, but I thought it was a really important slide to put in there uh, was the services that you can get from a, a testing lab um, or certification lab are quite vast, um, and it's good to know. Uh, you know where you can get assistance and help. And if you wanted these slides, let me know and grab, I'll grab your email. I'm happy to send it over to you. Um, okay, so how to request a quote. And the reason why I wanted to add this in here is that um, I get a lot of emails saying, "Hi, I need testing information," and it doesn't have all the information you need. So just to save time, this is the information that we need. One second. So this is. Yeah. So make sure you include your business name, your contact number, your ABN, your email, just your, your basic details because that allows us to, to put you in the system straight away um, and be able to provide a quote. But the market is really important. Let us know exactly what, what market you're going for, um, your location of the manufacturer because we have so many different labs um, and we like to keep that, that distance close, especially if you're going to send it straight. You don't need to send it from your home. You can get the um, testing lab or the, the manufacturer to send it straight, straight to, to the work. Um, um, what product is, any manuals, any pictures, any diagrams, um, anything that the engineers can look at and evaluate the need. Because once it's received it and there's additions to the product that weren't evident, the price might go up. Or it could go down. You never know, but it's, just, it's good to know. Um, okay, that's just the, the different accreditations, which have actually increased by now. Um, the Consumer and Retail Services website really 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 helpful website to get on for information um, it covers um, just so many different areas you can find some really valuable information there just to go in do a bit of a search look for your products um, you yeah you'll be surprised about how, how great the info is on there thank you very much Thanks. so you can always contact me um, my colleague can you take a picture <laughs> I was about to say, you look very pretty, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not Johnny. Um, so my colleague in the Hong Kong office, his name is Johnny, so he looks after this division. So basically, if he sends something over to me, I send it straight to Johnny. But I like to keep an eye on you guys as well. Okay? Yeah, Thank awesome. you very much. Um, so, first I don't know, my name's Frida. Um, I've been working in finance for the last eight years. I've uh, been at World First for the last four. Um, looking after the e-com uh, clients like yourselves uh, for the last 12 months. Um, but before I continue, can I get a show of hands for those who are just getting started, you haven't found a product, you haven't started selling on Amazon? All right, awesome, that's the majority. And show of hands who've been selling for more than a year. 
Oh, great. Um, and uh, who has been to the US? Has been. To the United States. Great, Thailand. <laughs> All right, awesome. So most of you have been exposed to foreign exchange, whether you've actually really thought about it or not. Um, so I'll just get right into it. If you are selling internationally, globally, whether you have your own website um, with Shopify host or whichever, Magento, whichever one you have, or you're selling on Amazon, you are selling overseas in the US, uh, Amazon US will pay you US dollars. Uh, in the UK, they pay you British pounds. Jap J Japan, they pay you Japanese yen. I'm sure you get the picture. Now, selling internationally and growing doesn't come without its complications. Um, now, everyone has an Australian dollar bank account. So if you're selling on Amazon US, they're going to pay you US dollars. So if you plug in your Australian dollar bank account, fantastic. Amazon US will pay you US dollars. On the way, they'll convert it as soon as it lands into your bank account. And if Amazon, if you're just starting out, it's very common to get about, you know, 20, 30, 100, 200 dollars. If you were to just receive $100 in your account, you can actually be shortchanged up to $25 in intermediary fees and international receiving fees. So that's a quarter of your cash gone to the bank. Um, and fantastic. So you've got your shiny green notes coming in. Amazon's paying you every fortnight. Fantastic. So you've got US dollars coming into Australia. But wait a minute. Your supplier in China wants US dollars. You found a manufacturer in India, they want Indian rupees. Uh, you, you've got a customer service rep and they want Philippine pesos. So then you need to send your Australian dollars out again to the Philippines, Thailand, or wherever your supplies might be, and you're making another conversion. So it's going US dollars, Australian, Australian dollars out. It, it all can get so confusing. Yeah, you're not just losing um, your hard-earned cash, but it's hard to keep track. It's hard to keep track of what you're actually making and your profits and expenses. But it doesn't have to be that hard, uh, and that's why I'm here today to tell you how it can be really easy for you. Um, so, when you're converting your cash and you're making a foreign exchange conversion, you want to keep your bank fees and charges to a minimum. Now, all of you know what a margin is in business sense, right? So pretty much cost of the, what the cost is of acquiring your product versus your selling price, right? So in foreign exchange, it's exactly the same. Um, so for example, you want to go to New York or you want to hit the tables at the Bellagio in Vegas. Uh, any blackjack players in the room? Where's Connor? <laughs> I, know, I know he's one of them. Um, so you Google how many US dollars you get for your one Australian dollar. And then Google is telling you that it's, for example, it's 70 cents. Right now it's about uh, 60. Yeah, exactly. Um, and okay, so you know what your $100 US bet is going to cost you? About $130 according to Google. You rock up at the airport and you see they're giving you 60 cents. Now that difference between your Google rate and what you're seeing at the airport, at TravelX, at MoneyGram, or even at your local bank, that is their margin. That difference between the cost of acquiring the dollar versus what they're giving you, they're making a whole 10 cents per dollar. So instead of a $130 bet, it's going to cost you $170 per 100 US dollars. So that's pretty much foreign exchange. <laughs> um, now, when making international transfers, of course, you can use your bank. Now, you understand what a margin is. Depending on who you bank with, your bank can charge you a margin of anywhere between 3 to 6%. 3 to 6, yeah? 3 to 6, yeah. And which is quite a lot. It is, it is. So that's how we're a business, okay. pretty much. <laughs> um, so you can make payments via your business credit card. So who doesn't like freaking five points? That's the only way I could for business class. So, um, but using your credit card is exactly, you need to calculate what the cost is versus, you know, gaining all those points. It, it, for every thousand dollars, you could be paying thirty dollars in fees yeah. for every thousand dollars. They uh, have a margin, depending on which card, around three percent. 
on the foreign exchange margin itself plus a 1% to 3% foreign exchange international transaction fee. So you could be paying 3 to 6% as well using your card. Or you can, you can use PayPal. PayPal um, is around 3.5% on the foreign exchange conversion. It also charges um, the recipient, if you're sending funds via PayPal, an international receiving fee, and also charges you um, an additional fee to make that transfer on top of the FX conversion. So using PayPal is even worse than using your local bank, or you can use an international payment service uh, similar to World First. I haven't seen Bitcoins there. I'll get to that. <laughs> Sorry, before I continue, um, so I'll introduce you to the World Account, which is a product that we've built specifically to service online sellers. Um, so this is just a quick video, which will walk you through. accounts. Um, so we've got a US dollar account, British pound, Canadian, New Zealand, Hong Kong dollar, CNH. Terence, give me some more. Singapore. Japanese yen. Japanese yen. Euros. Yep. So Terence is also uh, my colleague looking after the econ client. So any questions at all, um, have a chat to Terence or myself and we'll be happy to help. Um, so the US dollar account is actually located in the US. You will get a local ACH routing number, which is like the equivalent of the BSV number here, and you get your account number. In the UK, they have a sort code and account number with Barclays. So all those 10 currencies will give you an account located in that home country. Uh, and all the 10 accounts, you can also integrate plug into zero. Uh, QuickBooks is also on the way. Um, so, how does it all work? So, you've got US dollars coming in from Amazon. You just plug in your US dollar account into your Amazon Seller Central account. You've got someone buying your products, one or a hundred people buying your products or more. And every and then Amazon will collect the funds and make a payment to you every fortnight. And that will just clear into your World First account. No receiving fees if they if Amazon sends you. Uh, $999.99, you will actually receive that amount to the cent. And with your currency accounts, you can hold on to your funds for up to 90 days and then send your payments to suppliers wherever they might be located. Um, you're sending Thai baht, pesos, uh, in your rupees, uh, wherever you like. Um, you can make a payment to your supplier or you can bring the funds back into your Australian dollar account as and when you need to. Um, so I'll just quickly run through the fees. There's absolutely no fees to open the account, no account management, keeping fees, and uh, no receiving fees. And we can receive funds from anyone as long as it relates to your business. For example, you want to get a refund from your supplier, or you've, uh, or you've found a customer overseas who wants to do a bulk order, you can give them these accounts and we can pretty much receive the funds, no problems at all. Um, and the maximum we will ever charge is a margin of 0.5%, half of 1%, um, and you're comparing that to your banks, that's 3 to 6%. This is a whole lot cheaper and of course, once you're a seasoned seller making the big bucks, you're getting pretty much into bank rate at 0.15%. Um, so I'll just run through a quick example here um, taken today. So this morning, the rate was actually 0.6794. That was a live Google uh, interbank rate. Um, so company A uses a local bank. This is the rate I've taken from their website this morning. Um, and mind you, this is US dollars to Australian dollars. So the higher the number, 
the worse the exchange rate because this is the exchange rate and this has a higher number because we're doing US dollars to Australian. If you're doing Australian dollars to US dollars, this number should be lower. Uh, so company A is using a bank. This is company B that has a 0.5% margin. So it's just basically the interbank rate minus 0.5%. They're getting $20,000 a month, uh, or $10,000 a fortnight. And converting today, that will be the net figure. But because they have an intermediate receiving fee, that's $29. And that's the end result. So we will send you these slides later, and we can show you the math to work around it. But over one year difference, it's $14,000 versus your local bank versus uh, company that gives you a 0.5% margin. And um, that's pretty much it. And if you have any questions, just come grab us later. And we'll, we'll have a panel. Um, yeah, so look, in theory, as we, we've covered a small bit, um, FX is a minefield. Um, myself, I've worked in the banks for nearly 10 years, I've moved into the brokerage and space. Um, the difference is night and day. It's quite scary, actually, at what sort of cash you can save or what are elements. I suppose the whole idea is there is options other than a bank. Uh, there's people like ourselves who are brokers in the business um, to offer you more solutions to try and solve a problem. Uh, but again, interesting insights and we keep the train going. Um, this one's a tough one to introduce because it is the mecca why we're here. Um, I've had the pleasure of working with Cali for uh, a certain time now. I must have been thoroughly enjoyed it. I learn stuff every day from this. Uh, this is a new, a new field. Um, so without further ado, I suppose this is why we're all here tonight. This is, uh, you guys, uh, this lady needs no introduction. I uh, will give her one anyway. Uh, I'd like to welcome Callie to the stage, please. After that introduction, uh, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, all right, so, um, Essentially, let's let's see if he's wrong. Uh, is there anybody here who doesn't know me before tonight? Excuse me. <laughs> For you guys that didn't know me before tonight, do me a favour. Get on Facebook and sign up now to Amazon Sellers Australia. Uh, there's going to be a few questions for you to answer and because I'm not the only admin there I want you to answer to one of those questions Kelly told me to sign up so if they actually do accept you we, we, we kind of block about 20 What's people a day um, sorry What's the name? Amazon Sellers? Amazon Sellers Australia <coughs> USA and Global that's the long name um, so uh, <coughs> yeah there it is um, so uh, I'm admin of that page. Uh, it, it, uh, it's got about six and a half thousand members. Uh, it's an amazing resource. It's not always the best resource, uh, but absolutely there's a lot of peer um, information there. If you ever do come up against something and you want a real answer to something from me, just tag me in that group and I'll be sure to answer. Okay. Uh, so I went into that group and I asked one question about a week ago and the reason that I asked it was because I knew that I was going to come here and I've got about 10 to 15 minutes and uh, that's as much as I can talk <laughs> before uh, you guys start asking the questions. So I wanted to quickly put something together as to what people are finding um, hard uh, when it comes to Amazon. Um, some of you have been thinking about it for a while. Some, some of you have started out, but you're still struggling with certain things. So um, I pretty much just asked that question. Um, I would love to start selling on Amazon, but complete the, the, the sentence. Um, and overwhelming, uh, over, if I learn how to talk to, uh, <laughs> overwhelmingly, uh, everybody uh, state of confusion. Whatever that was, whatever that answer was, it was some sort of confusion when it comes to selling on Amazon. And a lot of it has to do with what the ladies uh, <laughs> spoke to you about today, but a lot of it is uh, when it comes to actually just starting out and, and whether or not I should start out or should I think about it for the next six months, right? 
So some of the answers that I got, uh, but I'm finding it hard to do the research on the products and understand the data. But I could not figure out how to list an item. So even the actual, uh, if you go into eBay and you decide you want to sell your car today, I bet you the 99% of you can do it. Um, when, it when you go into Seller Central on Amazon, it's not... <laughs> Thank you, Flo. <laughs> uh, but I'm still trying to get my account set up and doctor verified. 38 days and counting was um, one of the answers. And that was somebody who had, was trying to get verified, get their account verified and, and, and even... The, the first thing that happens is that your account gets suspended until you're actually verified as an individual who's selling on Amazon. Uh, so, uh, oh, did I miss a page? Yeah, the next one was, uh, but I can't decide if to start on, uh, in, in Australia or the USA. So a lot of people uh, only got excited because they saw that Amazon came to Australia. Um, and they decided to go and, and sell there and then they're hearing a lot of conflicting things. They're not making any sales, etc. But I don't know what essentials I should have for in place first. So people are asking me, do I need an ABN? Uh, um, what common mistakes people make and how to avoid them? Uh, I've had people taking electrical products into, onto the marketplace. Um, one big one was a children's night lamp that plugged into to, um, USA uh, PowerPoint kind of thing. And, and the minute it, it when it got on into FBA, the whole account was suspended. So, and, and there's good reason for that. Uh, somebody wanted children to be safe. Um, and then somebody was being really, really funny and said, but that first step is one hell of a lulu. And that one, I can relate to. <laughs> it took me probably about a year and a half uh, to send my first little box to uh, Amazon FBA because there was a lot of things that I couldn't understand. Um, so, yeah, I'm with you. So, uh, let me tackle those. Um, I'm finding it hard to research products and understand the data. I don't know what I'm saying there, but <laughs> I'll try and explain that to the best of, of my experience. Um, essentially, people are seeing Helium 10, my personal preference, Jungle Scout software, uh, a whole load of software that's supposed to help you to get as much data as possible from Amazon uh, so that you can use that data to understand whether a product is competitive, um, understand whether uh, that product, even if it's not competitive, uh, how, how to market it, um, what keywords to use, um, whether or not it's even viable uh, from the point of view of price, and etc. etc. Et um, uh, a lot of people do succeed in this business, and it's because of that data. But until you get to a point where you understand what that data means, and that most of it is pretty much just estimates of, of um, what Amazon would be able to feed us, um, then really all you're looking at is just numbers. So what do I say, Floor? may I ask? What's the best way to start with a product? I'm asking, what am I? She's she's the teacher's pet. <laughs> so, what 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 is the best way to start? How did you start? Uh, you just have to do it. Just, essentially, it. You've got to test a product. You've got to send a small piece of something. You've got to send 10, 20, 30. Send them in. Start understanding and analysing your own data. Look at what the back end of Seller Central is, sa is saying about your product. Are you converting the way that you should be converting? And if you don't understand what conversions are, then that's the way to learn it. After you've spent a couple of hundred dollars, not after you've spent 20 or 30 or 50 thousand, or bought something electrical and then found out that you can't do anything with it, right? So, uh, yeah, something about uh, brands, yep. Uh, if anybody that knows me uh, will tell you that I'm, I'm a big believer in brands. Uh, that as soon as you can feasibly do it, get your own trademark. Um, before you do that, make sure that you're not infringing on anybody else's trademark. Um, 
How can you verify that? Uh, there's, there's a lot of ways. So, it's, uh, actually, uh, ask that question later. <laughs> yeah. Really can, can, can you can can some yeah put it in in your phone and ask them that because I want I want to really expand. Um, all right. So, uh, some of this is missing. Somebody took my slides before I finished them. That's good because <laughs> that'll keep me <laughs> short. Okay. But essentially. Um, uh, they couldn't even understand how to list, and there, there's good reason for that. It, it is hard; it's, it is harder than any other platform uh, to list. So, uh, essentially, what you've got to do is have a product list, go in there, start doing it, make mistakes, call up Seller Central, uh, get into one of the groups, ask your questions, find out how to list. Once you've done it once, you, you're good to go as many times as you want. Um, the account set up, the verification bit. Uh, one of the first things that happens, the minute that you create your account, um, Amazon's going to send you an email and tell you, I want your driver's license, your passport, um, your bank account statement, your credit card statement, uh, utility bill. A, a couple of documents, not always the same ones. It does depend on how uh, your, whether you're a company single member company, the, what kind of company you, you, you're signing up as, or whether you're signing up as an individual, etc. Uh, first thing that happens is you get asked for a couple of documents and then um, you've got to upload those documents in a certain way. Um, don't do it in that certain way and you're going to get suspended again. Um, go into the group, do a search for ID verification, you'll see the amount of people that have gone through this and you'll also see the solutions to the problem and uh, just one by one how to upload those documents. Uh, yeah. yeah, I can't decide whether to go with Australia or the USA. Again, I haven't got a clue what I'm saying there. Yes? Or are you UK? Okay? <laughs> or UK? No, 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 you wouldn't start with the UK. No? You're a fresh new, if you're a fresh new seller, yeah. ask me that question later, All but right. you do not start in the UK. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, no, Australia or the USA is the biggest question, and those are the two easiest markets to tackle. Uh, that said, um, when, how many of you got an e-commerce business before Amazon and aside from Amazon? Okay. For you people, it is worth starting in Australia. And the reason that it's, it's, it's worth it is because you're probably already on eBay, Catch, Etsy, whatever the other platform you're already on, right? And what that's going to do for you, it's going to make sure that you're across all platforms in the one country. Um, for everybody else, uh, not so much. One product is usually what we recommend starting with. You don't want to go with one product to a marketplace that is fresh, new, that usually one product will sell, I don't know, as many times as one a day if you really, really, if you've got a good product, as many times as one a week if it's not so um, thought out, as many times as one every six months if it's something that, yeah. So you really want to go on a platform where you're going to be selling that one product. To sell that one product, we're better than in the country where there's 250 million people with access to some sort of a Prime account, ready and willing to press that buy button with one click checkout and just don't buy that. From anywhere else. If I tell you today, go out there tomorrow, find a product, buy 10 pieces of it, put a label on it and send it out. And don't worry if you're going to make a mistake, so long as you don't make one of those really important ones and don't send anything it's got a plug in it and don't send anything that's a, a, a baby cot, right? So find something small, find something um, that's safe and make that first step. How many of you will do that tomorrow? Please do. <laughs> and I think that's about it. Uh, what's the best way to start selling on Amazon? Just do it. Find a safe product, buy a small quantity, send it to FBA, Etc. Etc. Uh, ask lots of questions in the group. <laughs> Thank you.
fair boys. Um, we're also interested in one. I'm going to start with you. Um, what is the most important thing to understand when it comes to product safety? Um, so one of the most important things is really, and I, and I touched on it in, in the talk, is understand um, that different markets have different requirements. Um, understand that the US requirements are different to Australia, different to Europe, different to, to wherever it may be, um, and just to do the research. So having that understanding, meaning that um, you know, if you're working with manufacturers, uh, you're working with the suppliers, you know, and they offer you certificates that you understand that, you know, that one certificate may not cover all the markets. And just to have that knowledge, um, you know, will give you that confidence when you're dealing with them as well, just to, to, to do your research. I think we spoke, there's so many different markets out there, it's trying to understand and direct your way um, into that market, so yeah, absolutely. Probably Make sure that you've got the right standards for the same right. market. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And the ACCC website as well has so much information. It covers all the Australian standards, and that there might be something for the, you know, for the US as well. So there's a lot of information ready there available for you. That's awesome. yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's a key bit. Um, Kelly, I know we're going to have some sharp questions at you after this. It's a good thing. Frida, I'll go interested in one. Uh, we spoke a lot about the FX element tonight, I suppose, of what we do. Um, give me an example or show me a hurdle that your e comm starter, the sounds of things we've got some advanced or, or middle starters, um, what's a hurdle that, that somebody's going to come up against? The someone who's just starting out? Yeah, let's, let's go for some new stuff. Um, the hurdle with this side of things, but you, you do think that making a payment can be hard or the conversion you think you might be losing a lot on, on foreign exchange but you do need to make the payment um, and it's actually really easy um, so if you do find a product of course you need to get your samples once you've paid for your sample which I can help you do um, it's a really cost effective method you just send the Australian dollars into from your account into our accounts and off the money goes and it will arrive. That's pretty much the easiest thing in comparison to what you guys have to do as, as starters. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, Kelly, there we go. Um, I suppose a little bit want to talk about listing. Uh, we've spoken a little bit about how to get up there. Um, do, what's the most important, important aspect you think around listing a product, putting it out there? Um, there's a couple. So, uh, most important bit is to get the customer into your product to actually see it. And that would depend on your keywords. So well, that's data driven. That's what we uh, said that Helium 10 and Jungle Scout, etc., help you with. The way that they help you is they tell you how many searches per month there are on each keyword. Uh, and whether or not that is a competitive product or, or viable or whatever. Second thing is to actually sell it and that's where conversion comes in. Because yes, you, you, you pulled the customer in, they've, they've seen you in a search. Now there's two things that you've got to do. One is to get them to click on your product and open up the actual product page. And then the next thing is to press the buy button and get to the point where they've actually bought your product. Both of those, you'd be surprised how little people actually read in the listing. Um, both of those are primarily uh, predicated on whether or not your images are up to scratch. And that's where this kind man comes in and he's, he's come in today. Ben, um, is the owner of uh, Creative Content. Um, he actually creates images and he, um, uh, for, whether it's for the listing itself or for EBC content, if you don't know what that is, don't worry about it yet. It's got to do with uh, when you're brand registered, you've got extra bits on your listing. Uh, and those images are the ones that, the main image is the one that's going to get somebody to click into the listing itself and the other listings are going to uh, uh, make somebody actually buy the product. Uh, 
Can I put you on the spot? Sure. <laughs> Do you want to say something about um, about images? What's what's important about the images? Uh, look, uh, as Carrie was saying, the, the primary image is important to have something that's nice and clear. Um, as I understand, uh, the Amazon requires that you have an image that's fully etched on a white background. So the style is often similar between uh, all products, uh, but making sure you have a nice, clean, clear image that shows your product off is really important. From there, once you go in and have the other images that you can click on, that's where you start telling your story about the features and benefits of your product and why somebody should buy it. And that's where you use graphics as well as um, any kind of lifestyle uh, shots, etc. Okay, I'm going to open it up to the floor. Um, you can put your hand up if you have a question. Just say your name. Uh, go, good. First little pick already. Uh, we'll go ladies first, then we'll move to the gentleman in the back. If I was opening a transfer wide account, because I haven't sold anything well, yet, but if I was opening a transfer wise <coughs> account, um, what would it just be in something linked to my personal bank account? If I don't have a business account yet. So you open up a TransferWise account. Well, if I do, I yeah. think TransferWise is it something that I link to my personal bank account or do I have just a bit of TransferWise account is another uh, type of FX account from another type of business. Yeah. Um, uh, you, are you referring to uh, so World Perth? Like a, um, oh yes, sorry. Well first. Yes. Well first. Yes, so you want an FX account is essentially essentially yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so these accounts that we give you, similar to transferwise, I'll I'll be um straight up front. They're competitors. Yeah, it's not a secret. Yeah, there's there's a lot of competitors out there. Um, so with the World First account, it's actually a US dollar account in the US. It's separate to your personal account in Australia. Um, but that US dollar account, you plug into your Amazon Seller Central, so which is in the US. So Amazon US will pay US dollars into this US dollar account in the US with Citibank. And once it's held there, you can then utilize those US dollars to either pay your suppliers in US dollars or in what, whichever, whichever currency your supplier requires, or you can bring the funds back into your Australian dollar account um, as and when you need to. And that's where it goes into your personal account uh, or your business account, depending on what would ABN so what it could, could be do. either. That was my question. I didn't know whether I had to have a business account. No. Yes. Oh, no, no, it just depends on what your entity is, which is very yeah. important when you sign up with Amazon as well. For example, if, um, my, if I want to sign up an ABN as a sole trader, I'll, I'll just go on to um, ABR. I can get an ABN as a sole trader right now, free to care. I sign up for Amazon, great. My bank account needs to have, be in the name of Fruity Care, my ID, my proof of address, whatever needs to be in the name of Fruity Care. But if if I then decide to change to Fruity's Best PTY LTD, um, that bank account doesn't, it needs to change. I need to then update my entity. Correct me if I've said anything. You're yeah, absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. So it's actually really important to decide what entity and what business structure you want to... You yeah. can absolutely later uh, change. Yes. If you start as an individual, you can absolutely change to a company. Yep. Uh, I wouldn't suggest that anybody jumps into one or the other without talking to their personal accountant. And it's not because of anything Amazon related, it's more about what assets and liabilities you guys have. And I don't want to give any accounting advice today, so I'll stop yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. so, um, to answer your question, what, whichever entity you sign up with, we can give you an account in that own, in your name, or your business name, or your business as trading as, or business as trading as trustee for, blah, 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 company blah, blah. Name yeah. So whatever the entity is, we'll give you an account in that name. Um, and to answer your question, if you're thinking about TransferWise, a great company, but if you have something wrong with your payment, there's no customer service. You can't pick up the phone and call them, they're purely online based and also th it, they're not as transparent with their fee structure. So with, with World First you know exactly what you're getting charged, you know exactly what margin and what fee we charge every single time and whether we change that margin if, you, if you've gone into another bucket you can get 0.25% whereas um, the fees change 
every single <laughs> transaction, every single time you transfer wise. It's a good, qu good question. Transparency is key, I think, across yeah. the board. Um, again, there is so many providers in the market. Um, things can get a little bit hazy sometimes, but uh, in theory, as Parade have said, um, a lot of it stands to just understanding uh, what you're doing, what your entity is, um, and, and go from there, as I said. We, like all the guys on stage here. Can I say something? Yeah. Uh, for those of you who know me, you know that um, I wouldn't be here today if I didn't think that this was a great deal. Uh, and that doesn't mean that I don't have friends in uh, other uh, competitors. <laughs> we have we, we, we have a glass of wine together all the time, um, and I do believe that there is good customer service in some, not in others. That doesn't mean anything. Uh, right now, um, right at this particular moment, for me to be here, you've got to believe that this is the best deal that you've got, 0 0.5 uh, and under, depending on on what. Um, kinds of money you, you're actually moving. Um, uh, anything I forgot to ask? I uh, do have something. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we might have question. something. I, do, I have a charge <laughs> I had to wink, wink, I forgot no, to no, ask. <laughs> fantastic. No, I'll, I'll be really rewarded. Very good. Um, anyone else in the audience? Yeah. Oh, a few today. It's good. Well, um, I'll really yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. See you next week. So my one was just about IP protection. Um, so um, our product, um, we're doing it under the Madrid Protocol um, for global and then of course the the USA. But then I also read something about Amazon brand registry as well. Mm -hmm. um, so can you just give me a brief rundown as to how that sort of differs and whether or not um, just having your uh, trademark registered in the USA um, under the Madrid Protocol, if that's enough to cover your um, rights there? Well, yeah. So the only place that you're trademarking is in the USA, you're um, trademarking in Australia we've as well? We've got a trademark here in Australia as well. Okay. And, um, Korea and China. So for anybody who uh, doesn't know what she's uh, what she's talking about, uh, her brand name, uh, she's uh, doing she's she's doing the right thing and she's trademarking it across four different countries, uh, and that's so that she knows that uh, her her brand name is going to be protected in all of those countries. So that's the legal aspect of it. If you've got one trademark, regardless of which one that is, that will allow you to have brand registry across the board, uh, across the board uh, in all marketplaces in uh, on Amazon. Uh, it's not as simple as what I just said, so you do need to get brand registry in the country that you've got a, a trademark. Mm -hmm. And what's going to happen with you is you're going to get uh, each one of those trademarks at a different time frame, because mm -hmm. uh, some of them are going to take like five months yeah. and some of yeah. So you, it's going to happen incremental, in, incrementally for you. Mm -hmm. Essentially, if you get your Australian trademark before all others, what you can do is go to amazon.com.au, the mm -hmm. Australian uh, platform, and uh, apply there for what's called brand registry. But I do have some good news with, for you if you tell me that you don't yet have any uh, Amazon accounts. I don't. You don't? Okay. Um, there's something called brand registry whitelisting. And why that is important is because um, you can get all the positive things that brand registry will give you, which is essentially protection of your ASINs across the board. Um, uh, it will also allow you to get what used to be called up to very, very recently, EBC, Enhanced Brand Content. Uh, today it's called A Plus Content, uh, which is essentially a, a website within the website, a, a website within Amazon. Uh, it allows you for additional content, more uh, images, um, and at, at the same time a storefront. Uh, so all of that wonderful stuff and a lot more, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to get into all those those uh, amazing things, but essentially you can have those uh, whitelisted uh, based on the uh, fact that you have applied for a trademark in the country that you're applying for that brand registry, uh, so long as you go through uh, an account manager. Um, there's a couple of ways to get an account manager. The easiest way is for me to shoot an email to either Amazon Global or to Amazon Australia or even to both. Okay. So after 
this is over in the next couple of days, uh, shoot me an email, give me a call, um, remind me what we're doing and, and I'll shoot those couple of emails for you and you can get started with uh, an account manager and hopefully brand registry as well. So just a quick follow up, that storefront, um, that storefront listing um, that's white listed, do you know if that also inst in, um, integrates with Instagram? No, 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 no. no. This is this is a storefront on Amazon. It's 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 essentially it looks like a website, but it's within Amazon. Okay. So is it like uh, Shopify? No, 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 no. It looks like a website, but it is on Amazon. Wow. So it's within Amazon.com or Amazon.com.au. So, so it won't come up under a Google search if you were to search it? It, it absolutely will. It will. Uh, it right. absolutely will. Yeah. And, and what content you put in there, again, going back to the SEO and the images, etc., that uh, a professional can, all of that stuff does, does actually show up. You've got the best, best seat there, Matt. I know, too. <laughs> 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 and you, <Jute>. Tay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyone else on the bike? A couple of hands up. Uh, for yourself. Okay, I've got two questions, uh, one for Callie and one for Jomi. So for Callie, the question is, uh, we are about to launch our first product on Amazon US in December. I would like to know the cutoff time for Amazon US store for Christmas selling. We had a chat about that uh, earlier. Uh, your product isn't due to hit FBA for another couple of weeks. Um, and I'm sorry to say that most probably you've, you've missed the boat. Uh, so uh, for this year, and every year there's a different cutoff, but for this year, the cutoff uh, for getting product live uh, on Amazon.com for Christmas, so that it will be available for Christmas, is the 3rd of December. Uh, I've seen some strange things happen across the last few years, and uh, I've seen some products that have gotten in two or three days after that cut off, um, and they still made it for sale, mm -hmm. uh, or they made it for sale like two days before Christmas or something. Um, I've also seen products get knocked back the day before the cut off. So, um, and it, it really depends on what kind of, of knocked back that means because, um, yeah, uh, essentially what they're supposed to do is they're supposed to take the product and receive it properly but not put it up live for Christmas. Um, but I have seen if it comes in um, on a holiday or on a cutoff date or something, the product uh, can actually even be knocked back. So uh, I'm hoping that doesn't happen to your product, but um, yeah, good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and the second question is um, for Jermaine. So if our product, it's a product which is new to market, it's got patent, IP protection, brand registry, trademarks, everything is secure. Do we still need to get a certification uh, like the, what you mentioned earlier? before it goes live uh, on all Amazon. That you or can we do it at the same time that we launch it? Oh, yeah, you can absolutely do it at the same time. That's no problem. You can do it at any stage. At any uh, stage. But any, all the, all the that you mentioned, trademarks, that's absolutely got nothing to do with product certification and testing. Okay. It's completely, completely separate. Um, so you can do it at the same time. It won't impact of you. So does that also apply for product liability insurance? Do we have to secure it before the launch or can it be done once it's live? Uh, I'm not familiar with liability insurance. Oh, um, just for, that, that's for Kelly question. Okay. Um, so actually, did you want to answer that now? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm happy to. Uh, so essentially, um, with insurance, you've got to have a product that you're selling before you, you've got insurance. But at the same time, you want to start prepping and finding out what your costs are. So start getting quotes. Testing. So you may not know, like I don't know what your product is, um, but depending on the product, whether it needs testing or not. So just don't think it, not every product needs to be certified or needs to be tested by any means. Um, just depends on, on the product. If it's a woman's apron, don't worry about it. But no. if it's anything children's related, anything electrical, and, and even if you're not absolutely sure, just pick up the phone. <laughs> Uh, what is the you for the USA market? Like, if you want to, uh, the, you know, the drop shipping. So, 
So I know in this case, uh, Amazon basically does the logistics for you, right? So if you have a minimum, you need to have a minimum requirement for that. All right, so you just open a, what kind of uh, drop shipping are you referring to specifically? Yeah. So you're buying a product from where? and selling it on which platform? Well, I'm not sure what I'm going to buy yet, but I wanted to sell it on the USA market. So you want to be, uh, so drop shipping means that you're in some sort of a relationship with a supplier. Yeah. Uh, you list the product somewhere. Yeah. When that product sells, your supplier sends it to the customer. Is that what we're referring no. to? No, no. I know no. Amazon as well does the supply for you. And this is why it's Amazon dropshipping. Uh, so basically Amazon gets the storage for you and then FBA. it does the distribution for you. Ah, okay. So fulfillment by Amazon. Yeah, fulfillment okay. by Fine. Amazon. Yeah. Uh, Sorry. So you, you, you want to send your product into the USA? Yeah. All right, so what, what's the question the then? The question is what's the minimum uh, volume or the minimum One piece. Volume? Only one piece for the, what's the charges they apply on? Uh, depending on your store, the, the say, the it depends on, on the size and, and how much space it takes, etc. So let's say because the United States is quite big, so in this case... It's a big product? <coughs> no, no, I'm not talking about the product, I'm talking about the states. So how can you do that logistically? Like, I mean, do you have like to spread your products on different like logistic point for this no no no, no 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 okay so how does fba work is 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 really uh the, the best question that i can answer right now yeah. all right so uh fba fulfilled by amazon um you list your product on amazon.com yeah. um you create what's called a shipping plan and essentially a shipment yeah. you create all the documents that they will tell you to create um more often than not, there's a couple of different ways that that gets separated in <coughs> at that point. But more often than <coughs> excuse me, more often than not, if you do things the right way, you will have to send your products directly into one Amazon uh, warehouse. Yeah, where like I mean, because there's so many. Most yes, there's about 250, I think, <laughs> or well, might have that, or however many warehouses there are across the country. The aim is to have one unit at every single warehouse across the country so that it's close enough to the customer to be received within anything between two hours and two days. Yeah, because I know your say markets go a different standard, so they expect the goods to arrive between, like, let's say, two to three business days. So, so it depends when the, where yeah. they are. Yes, uh, there's there's uh, there's some <coughs> main cities that do get their products within two hours. So this can be a challenge, right? As well, in a sense. Not for you. No. Okay. Not for you. You, yeah, you have nothing to do with it. One of the You've sent your products. Case. That's it. It's not your responsibility. Yeah. yeah. You're not responsible for that after that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. But then I wonder how many fees they would apply on me just because they need to move goods on. You know. The, the fees are standard across oh, the, yeah? across the board. You pay, you pay an FBA fee. That comes up as you're listing your product. Um, the the fees again are standard when it comes to storage. Um, there's different <coughs> fees for storage between January and September, and different fees between October and, and December. Okay. Those fees are standard. They have nothing. To, it has. You have nothing to do with the part where Amazon takes over and fulfills your orders. They take over, they've got all the responsibility from there on. That, but that's a beauty that's a whole beauty of it. That's yeah. that's why we love it so much, because we have nothing to do with the customer. Yeah. <coughs> <laughs> hey, I've been in e commerce for a long time. You just, just see some of the silly things that I think. <laughs> I think we've got time for one more question. Uh, we're gonna take it inside as well so the guys will still be around if you want to ask a question. Absolutely. Um, for any of those details, we'll take it offline, and then I want to just ask the guys one last question uh, before we go. So I'm going to go to this lady, she's around. Um, you still want to ask a question? Yeah. Yeah. Far away. Go for it. Just I don't know. They asked it before. <laughs> Why shouldn't this start my business in UK? Ah yes, yeah. <laughs> yes. We we had a question in the mm -hmm. Um It's 
more complicated than what it is in the USA. So essentially, I in actually I started a try opening my bank account, my bank account, my Amazon account. And they're there. asking you now and for the Oh my god! Yeah, yeah it was so. They so it for me. So like look for a account and. Uh, <laughs> okay. So essentially, what what you're putting yourself up against is admin costs. Uh, you need to have an accountant. You need to prepay VAT uh, costs as an international seller into the UK. You also need to uh, ask the question whether or not you uh, need to be paying VAT in any other EU countries, depending on whether or not somebody from Germany, for instance, buys a product in the UK. The VAT uh, uh, percentage is different in each EU country, and at the same time, uh, you've got to figure out what the best way to sign up is in the first place, because one way will uh, be better for you in such a circumstance than the other way better for you. Out. The cost of admin, accounting, upfront VAT uh, charges, and just the pure headache yeah. for, a, for a country that's got about one twentieth or, or so the amount of prime members. I would go to the USA any day, even though they are a more competitive market, and even though I've got a smash my head a little bit yeah, more just because to find a less competitive it, yeah. product. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, oh, absolutely. I would go there yeah. anyhow. But UK is good, second, mm -hmm. third country. So once you've established yourself in the USA, maybe you can try later. Absolutely, it's a yeah. it's a big market. It's a great market. The, the the whole EU is is amazing. Um, just make sure that you've got enough funds to pay for your account. Yeah. <laughs> Put your money. In there. That's one Thank last you. question. This lady in the back, sorry, excuse me. <laughs> they almost insist. No, that's probably not tr true. But they highly recommend that you source products from China, from Alibaba? Uh, yeah. They do. I Even the that. new one this year. Even so the new one this year. As far as I can remember. I've only uh, gone through uh, it. It's only yeah. just come Look, out. it's easier. Okay. It's, it's absolutely easy. However, yeah. if you listen to someone like one of your colleagues in Melbourne, uh. and Tim Jordan, uh. who say uh, that... Go to India. Correct. So, I'm on Megalosing and all of that. I didn't go to the... To the I didn't go on the trip. But it's almost impossible to find um, a good quantity of supplies. That that thing that she's got, the India Mart, is very limited. Uh -huh. And depending on what you're looking at producing, mm -hmm. and also then I've been hearing from people like Tim Jordan about the possibility and not a bad idea to source products from places like Nepal. Um, Even and the USA. Pardon? Even the US, even, even Australia, the USA. Even Australia. So where do you find these places? I mean, Alibaba's got millions of them if, once you get onto there. So the first thing that you've got to decide on is your product. If you haven't decided on your product, we're, we're talking... I'm looking, the, I'm looking. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking in the air. Oh, God. But once you've decided on your product, um, India's a lot better in some types of products than what China is. I'll guarantee you that... Uh, 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 Cushion cover is going to be a lot better quality coming from India than what it is in China. And you're probably going to get something so unique that nobody else has seen it. Right? But then also, people like Tim Jordan, I, I've watched a lot of his stuff, uh, he says that the logistics and infrastructure in India is not as advanced. No, it isn't. And, and that essentially means that you're going to need to teach them. So uh, where, when you're sending your uh, labels to China, you're just sending your labels and they just go ahead with the job of applying them. In India, you're going to have to tell them, put the label here, not here. So do you do it through an agent? You do it, yes. Yeah, there are agents. Yeah, absolutely. Go into Megala's group and type in yeah, yeah, agent sure, needed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and about 20 of them will So how there. do you find lists of... That's not the point. The point is find your product first. And don't find your product based on what would I like to sell. Find your product based on keywords. USA is a very, very competitive market. Don't try and sell garlic presses. <laughs> <laughs> so people that just had a bit of a, a snicker already know 
the garlic presses have been on it's, it's the joke around Amazon sellers um, that they're so competitive that I nobody thought it was should... silicon kitchen One yeah, yeah and that too yeah. don't touch it <laughs> <laughs> but uh, bear in mind in China uh, Mr. Trump yeah. has applied some the amazing tariffs. Yeah. So if you're comparing apples to apples, you might find that you're not going to pay that much more in India for the same product um, because you're not going to have those tariffs applied. Whatever that tariff is, anywhere between 10 and 25 percent, 40 percent, and with all the rest of the customs. So it, it ends up being like um, one and a half times the, the cost of the product if it's coming from from China. So if 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 you find the same product in India for one and a half times that that Chinese price, you might actually be breaking even. And but it, if you buy it from the USA, you're not paying any tariffs. You're not paying any customs. Well, how do you're not find paying suppliers anything. in in the US? Google trade fairs, <laughs> just like everybody else. <laughs> Google trade fairs, absolutely, absolutely. There's a lot of places. But even Alibaba, Alibaba is not Chinese. Yeah. Mm. I no, wrong. <laughs> Alibaba <laughs> is Chinese, <laughs> but it's not just full of Chinese suppliers. There are Australian suppliers in on Alibaba. Mm. And you probably won't get anything for the same price from Australian suppliers on Alibaba, yeah, but you can still find Australian suppliers on Alibaba. Mm. And um, one of the reasons why ASM and others do recommend you buy from Alibaba is because Alibaba do have their trade assurance. So what we help thousands of people do is make payments to Alibaba trade assurance. It basically works as an escrow. You're sending it to Alibaba's supplier's account. So you go from your account here in Australia. You found an order, you have an order ID. Alibaba will give you their bank account details. We pay for your order to Alibaba Trade Assurance, and then Alibaba sends the, um, makes the payment for you. They ship the product out. If you have any issues with the product, you go to Alibaba, Alibaba sorts it out, um, and you, that's un, until you find a trusted supplier, you just go by Alibaba Trade Assurance. That as, a, as a first yeah. tie seller, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Alibaba. Don't they have like bigger like LOQs than, um, mm. Like Alibaba's the, the the bigger one than uh, what's that other similar one? AliExpress. Yeah, AliExpress. Yeah, AliExpress is retail. Yeah, you can buy one item as well. Yeah. AliExpress. I should buy AliExpress. <laughs> yeah. uh, I actually started on AliExpress. So what I was doing was I was going into uh, product uh, detail pages that were offering one product uh, for twenty dollars, and I turn around and say to them, "Okay, what if I buy fifty off you?" And then they dropped the price, not quite to what if I was going to buy a thousand. Um, but that was my way of testing the product. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I have had a lot of my customers say, "Don't be shy to chat with them on. You found oh, yeah. a product on AliExpress. Don't be sh shy to get to chat with them and maybe take them offline. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe you can buy one product. Once you establish that relationship, you can add them on Skype um, and then test it out." can get them, um, I don't recommend this, but if you're paying for one product, um, you can you know, pay by PayPal, send them $20. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, it's um, the same they, thing. They sent it out, send it out. Easy, fast. Once you establish that relationship, uh, maybe you don't need to go by Alibaba Trade Assurance, you have that trust there, you yeah. speak to them on the phone, by Skype, you see them face to face by the net. Um, if you're paying $50, you don't really care, but at the same yeah. time, you, you, PayPal, Will cover you for fifty bucks as yeah, a exactly. as a buyer, etc. So, yeah. Okay. Um, we'll just close off with one last, quote. one sentence, one question, uh, quick response. Okay. Your best bit of advice you can give somebody on going forward from here. We already did that, didn't we? <laughs> just do it. Just a one liner. We want a bit of advice for everyone in the room. Um, Where I'll start with you. Alright, mine's well, easy, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> nice and easy. If you're not sure, ask. Be safe and do it. <laughs> 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 okay, guys, I think that, that concludes the evening and starting the formal stuff. Um, I'd certainly like to thank the 
ladies up here, let it sign what you need from you well. Sign Kelly. Um, Big Kelly. Fantastic world of wealth. Uh, I'd like to type Farida. Well, first, I'd like to type Ben in the back there for content creative. He's kept us all and the loop. Uh, there's a wealth of information you, you've, uh, is, is out there. Um, you just hear a really, really good cut of it. Um, I would encourage you to go explore. Check these guys' websites out. Um, check Amazon Sellers Australia. We've got these questions. That's the sort of forum to take it there. I learn stuff every day on it. Again, as I said, we're involved in the industry, but to, there's tons of stuff we've learned. Um, Kelly, you'll be putting stuff up on Facebook. Absolutely. So, yeah. uh, so uh, Ben's been wonderful. Uh, he's he's pretty much taken photos of everybody and everything. Yep. Uh, there's video footage there. Uh, whenever it's ready, it's going to start going up and it's going to look really professional for the first yep. time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Ben. Uh, but, um, yeah, in the meantime, anybody that's got any shots or anything, please go into the group and, and put them up there and, and tag us and, and, and what have you. And um, oh, if you so if you you're part of um, Kelly's group and then you if, register with us, we can give you that's $50 what I want. Yeah. Buyer, oh, JB Hi-Fi voucher. That's you can give your first trade. Yeah. So that's, that's a that's a group promotion that we have. So it never it, expires. It never expires. The $50 one. That's what we're <laughs> So, guys, get into the group. Uh, tag the guys as well. They're all in there. Um, pick up the phones tomorrow and sign up. We'll sign up tonight if it's available to us. Um, and yeah, 50 bucks on. on, on. You all don't have an you. offer also, actually. Sorry? You, you all have an yes. offer. Yes, please. Uh. <laughs> If uh, your product falls into the consumer and retail division, we've been, um, we're, we're Australian fits in, which is the Asia, basically, the, the testing is conducted within Asia, you get 30% off your testing. Um, so that's not just one product, it's for any of your products, as long as it falls in. So if it needs to get tested in the US, unfortunately, that falls out of that. Um, any of your toys, um, any of your hard goods, so your, if you're doing dustpans, um, aprons, Pretty much 80% of the products will pull into that division. Um, but so it's, just, it's really important. If you've got a product us. now that you're thinking about, give her a call tomorrow, find out if it needs so testing, if all, it does. Yep, so all Australian Amazon sellers, but it doesn't have to be Amazon, I'm going to stretch a little bit, but just make sure when she's a girl. Thanks a lot, everyone. Thank you for Enjoy the movie, put the drinks left over inside. Uh,